Hi guys, welcome to another Minecraft Monster Minecraft Monster Story. I'm going to teach you how to add your very own Forge Energy Energy Producer. Um, if you haven't watched the introduction to this series, I recommend you go check it out. Understand the concepts that we're going to be covering today. And also, um, you might want to look at GitHub at the preparation I did for this. It's only adding all these methods, which make sure it saves, it has the correct capabilities. Uh, for this furnace generator, I'm going to be using the worker capability that we made in the capability tutorial. This is just so that in the GUI, we have a working progress bar. And uh, as you can see, uh, this is all synced up with a server, which is great. So, that's going to make a little icon move as we burn through our fuels. And this is going to accept any furnace fuel. So, first thing that we need to do is get our forge energy storage. Or, I'm using a custom forge energy storage. Uh, this is because uh, the actual forge energy storage, which this implements from, doesn't have the ability to extract and, re extract and receive energy internally. Uh, which is literally all this one does. Um, that's that's the only chain. So I'm going to initialize this here just before the worker, just so that uh, well, we want to use this in the worker. So we're going to do the one that has the max receive, max extract one. The capacity is just going to be one hundred thousand. So that's five zeros. Uh, the max receive is going to be how much it's going to receive. This one isn't going to receive any, and it's going to extract a thousand, and that's a thousand forge energy or RF. It is basically the same thing. So we're going to copy it into this other one. Uh, this is the one which allows us to have a type of uh, machine, and that allows us to change it. So if it's basic, it's one thousand. If it's not basic, it's uh, 500,000. And that's the same with the max extract. That's type equals basic. And that's 1,000 to 5,000 is the uh, uh, chip types. There you go. Uh, that's 5,000 extracts. So you can extract a bit more. So. Uh, as I discussed in the introduction to the series, this will generate 40 RF per tick, as long as it's got the fuel inside. So all of this is going to be done in the work part. So what we need to do first is we need to actually save our uh, energy storage. So what we want to do is do read from MBT, so this dot storage dot read from MBT, like so, and then this dot storage dot write to MBT like so so that was to make sure it's saved you now want to say that we have the capability so if capability equals equals uh, capability energy and then that's energy like so we're going to say true and then here if capability equals uh, capability energy dot energy we're going to return casting it to t this dot storage like so, so that's saying that we've got the capability. Um, now we can actually uh, do what we want to do, the work. So what we're going to do is we're going to have an item stack for the fuel. And this item stack is going to be equal to uh, what we extract an item from the first slot. We're going to extract one false and it's not a simulation. We're going to get extract one item from it once we've done the work at, at the end of every cycle we're going to extract that item we're going, then going to check if the fuel is not equal to item stack dot empty so if it's not empty uh, then we know we've successfully extracted the fuel and we know this will only accept uh, furnace fuels due to the slot furnace generated fuel class which I made which literally inherits everything from the slot furnace fuel here it's the is item valid and get item stack limit. That's basically the same code again. Um, that just allows for lava buckets and that lot. So if the fuel is not empty, so we have actually extracted something, then we need to set the cooldown relevant to what it is. So we're going to do this dot worker dot, then set 
the max cooldown and the max cooldown is just going to be tall entity furnace dot get item burn time fuel like so and that will mean that this is going to run until we are done um we also want to do a check before this though making sure that this dot storage dot uh get energy stored uh like the difference when you see what's left so this dot storage dot get max energy stored minus this so say we've got 40 hour a tick left if if it's less than if that is less than what we're going to generate which is 40 then we can't do it so it's got to be greater than 40 for it actually to like consume it and uh so basically if it's if like we're full on energy we're not going to keep using up items we're done with that so that's going to start consuming stuff um and every time work is done it should reset uh what we want to do here is just if it is empty um i don't want the else there if it is empty then uh we know that the cooldown the max cooldown should actually uh be set back to one so set max cooldown to one so we're going to reset it so what we'll do is we'll make sure that we are supposed to be doing work so if this dot worker dot uh get max work so the max cooldown uh i really should sort out the way it's called actually uh if the max work is not equal to one so then it has it's supposed to be doing work then we are going to this dot storage dot and we're gonna give energy so it receive energy internal we're gonna receive 40 rf and it's not a simulation and we're going to receive that energy uh from it so if we if we've got like if we're burning through a fuel we will set uh, we'll receive 40 rf per tick uh but we want to make sure it's not full so if it is full we're not going to continue to do work that's one thing that we're going to do so if that store this dot storage dot get and uh, max energy store take it away so if it's greater than 40 like we've got over 40 left we're gonna start giving energy but if it's not we won't give energy and this is where we should stop increasing the cooldown so the max cooldown should stay the same uh, but I don't believe there's any way to disable uh, the do work um, so we're gonna have to leave that like so so we can just copy this over to the other worker here just so it makes sure it does work and all we're gonna do is if this dot worker dot uh, get max work is not equal to one so we are burning fuse through something and we want to also make sure that we're not full we like this same check up here so we don't if we and we make sure that we have got space to give stuff then we will if it's full we're not even going to try and do work so uh that is correct so this dot worker dot do work like so uh if it's not equal to one on that's if no we're always going to be doing work it's just going to stop doing work as soon as the energy so as soon as we've got enough space to do energy we're going to start doing work again which is correct one last thing that we're going to do is we want to make sure that we update the block state when it is active so um every time we're doing all this work 
we need to make sure it's marked as dirty that this something's happened so this dot mark dirty saying we've changed something we need to save make sure it has saved so we'll update it which is brilliant um and in this part this is where it is active so we need to update the um the block state so this dot world dot set block state uh two will send a change to clients uh so here we go so this one is going to be this dot pause the new state is going to be the current state so this dot world dot get block state at this dot pause except for this time it's with the property and that's block furnace generator dot activated and we're going to say it's activated and we want to send this to the client um, and if not like if like if there is if there isn't room then we're going to say hold on a minute you shouldn't be activated and i'm just going to do one last if statement and that's if this dot worker dot uh, get max work is equal to one then we need to make sure it is also not activated uh, one thing we will now have to add is somewhere in here i might just do it underneath here we're gonna have to add a should refresh method which should say uh, which is called when you update the block state so say when you break it and place it what we're going to do is return if old state dot get block is not equal to new state dot get uh new oh it's, they called it new state okay new state dot get block then we should refresh so if it's a completely new block we're going to refresh otherwise it you don't need to remove the tile and team place it again so what we need to do now is we need to actually make sure we have an energy bar set up so in the GUI class, I'm going to have an energy bar, an energy bar. In the init GUI, we're going to initialize this. So uh, I'm just going to open up the GUI for the block breaker because I'm going to have it exactly the same as the one for the block breaker, uh, where it's going to be placed in that lot. Um, I think we called it after super. And we also need to sync it. So we're just going to call this dot. Uh, when when we call the sync stuff this dot uh, energy bar dot sync data and then it's this dot te dot get pause and then we have to put in a side so in and facing north it doesn't matter because the way we've got our setup but if yours works with side you need to have a side uh, due to a bug with that which will be fixed um, one more thing which I always forget to do is we need to add the action performed method. This is to make sure that um, we can click it correctly. So if the button is this dot energy bar, then we need to call the energy bars um, action performed, which takes in this dot MC and also the tile entity. Um, if we just take a look here, all it does is it's supposed to give energy to the item uh, that's not working yet but hopefully in a couple of updates or as soon as I can I'll get it working uh, but this one here is basically cycles the energy in it which you'll see once we run the game afterwards what we're going to do is if fuel dot get item as equal to uh, items dot lava bucket if we consumed a lava bucket we want to make sure that we put a bucket in there uh, and so we're going to put the bucket in there so this dot handler dot and what we're going to do is set stack in slot slot zero is going to be a new item stack items dot bucket we're going to put the bucket in like so and
Um, so what we should actually be doing is something I've just thought about is we sh we are supposed to be giving energy to every single side. Um, so what we're going to do is if we head over to the tile entity energy cell. So we want to give energy all faces. Uh, the amount we're going to we need to create this extract variable. So we are going to extract uh, transfer is for now we'll just do we'll just give out a thousand and that should give energy all faces a thousand so that should give all the energy out obviously this will just hug all the energy it has inside because that's the way energy cells work but if I was to place this next to something like a couple of atomic reconstructors um, and I'll nix from Infinity Flame so we never run out. Uh, if you get you and place it next to, like, say, two of these, I believe if I shove in this, it should split it between the two. So this one's going up in. This doesn't update at the time. Uh, we need to get redstone. Uh, redstone to toggle. Toggle. Okay, so. Um, I can't see how much these are going up by. Uh, what other block receives it from actually additions? The crusher. Okay, the crusher. So this updates. This, you can see this is going up by 20s. I can see that. Uh, if I was to slow down the footage, you'd see that's going up in 20s. And this one is also going up in 20s. Which suggests that the sort of RF regenerating is split between the two. Which is how it works. So say we put three of them. It splits it between three... Four, it splits it between four, so each of these go up in tens, and that's the way it works. It splits it between all the machines surrounding it, which is good. Yeah, you've got a furnace generator, which has a nice looking burn thing, uh, as, as you could see here. We put that in, it slowly goes down, and then you'll go up, so that'll generate 4000 RF, like so. And I'll sleep and toggle this, so that's 16. Uh, 100 joules 400 mega joules or, or micro joules 2400 EU and 4000 RF and you can see that it did disable it so we look it's active and then when it goes to 8000 it should be not active brilliant so thank you guys for watching the like comment and subscribe I am out